Hi guys, welcome back. This is Riza here. Welcome back to another edition of Riza's Musings and Ramblings. I'd like to express my emotions this month because I have a cancer rising in my chart. So this new moon in cancer has really affected me a bit more than I thought. I guess the older I get, the more sensitive I am to the different signs and the planetary movements within these signs. So this year, um, the sign of cancer being highlighted by the sun and other movements that are going on within the sign have really affected me. But it's helped me open my heart up a bit more, become more emotional as to where I had been a, a bit closed off when it comes to romantic relationship, when it comes to romance, when it comes to love itself, to myself and to others around me. So I, I welcome these energies that have been affecting me because they have helped me feel a bit more, even though it's gone rather deep in me. I have also written a poem that I want to share with you guys today. I'm going to do a mini reading along with this session of musings and ramblings. And shortly after that, I'll put out the weekly reading for this upcoming week in July. The poem I have written goes like this. It's titled Love Eternal. This poem goes out to all of my loves throughout time and space, past, present, and future, love that is deeply felt and sworn to never forget, to meet again, a love eternal. These words, this poem, these tears of pain and longing in my heart is for you. My heart has loved and learned from many and has not forgotten any. My soul cries out for them and yearns for their warmth, their touch, their words of love eternal. For some reason I have been feeling all of my past loves, a connection to past lives, connection to my loves from the present time, from this incarnation, and perhaps even those that are coming up. I know it sounds strange, but it is what I believe. And for some reason, it just all kind of is affecting me at this time. It seems like there must be a significant soulmate that's coming into my life at this time that comes from a past life and I can feel it. I have a connection with him when it comes to dreams. There's a sort of a psychic type of connection with him as well. So I want to do a brief reading as to what can I do to bring on this soulmate that I'm waiting for, a twin flame, if that exists, as I'm not sure yet whether a twin flame or a soulmate are the one and the same, or if there is a significant difference, but I feel that the next person that is coming is going to be extremely significant in my life at this point in my life because of the growth spurt that I have had in the last 10 years when it comes to the occult, to the mysteries of life, to spirituality, to opening up myself to who I truly am or what I love the most in my life. So let's go on with the reading. I'm going to use the Major Arcana to show me what the main influence is around me meeting someone new or what I need to do in order to precipitate the union or the meeting because first has to come the meeting 
the friendship and then perhaps a union later if I even decide that I, I like this new soulmate. So we'll have to see. The card that I'm getting is the Hierophant. I'm not even surprised because even before I went to grab the deck, that card is the one that came to my mind. It was the one that was going to come out. Number five. Five represents change. It represents a change on a deeper level, on a spiritual level, a spiritual teacher, a commitment, which is something that I want. I want a significant commitment with someone, a commitment that is spiritual as well as mental and as well as physical. But spiritual has to come first. There has to be a deep soul level connection with my next soulmate. There is no other way that I can even become interested in someone unless there is. Has to be from a past life and has to be felt deeply. And there, of course, I got the Hierophant card, which you probably can't see it now, but I don't really want to turn the lights on. I'm just not in the mood. I'm really, really, really feeling these feelings that are very, very deep. So... I need to be in the darkness for now, but the Hierophant is the perfect card. It's the card that blesses the union. It's the card that that tells me that this person can be a very grounded person, a very dedicated person to others, um, an earth sign at that, a Taurus perhaps even, Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo person, a person that could be deeply religious or has very deep uh, beliefs. It may represent a marriage as well, a union that is blessed by the divine. The situation has ended in my life where I have felt betrayed, where I have been betrayed in the past by myself, by my own decisions, by others. And I am taking a bow to that. I am just releasing that energy now. I am coming to terms with my past, with my past relationships, with the mistakes that I have made along with um, the things that have been done to me, the betrayals, the... Just the differences that I've had with, with other mates that I haven't really realized because there were unions based on, on attractions or on other things and not really on that soul connection initially. That spiritual connection where the divine is the one that uh, is foremost in the relationship, you know. There's also fears that have been connected to relationships of mine in the past. Fear of betrayal, fear of commitment, fear of, you know, being let down. And I think that I may have um, attracted that energy because I feared it. So I was confronted with it in order to overcome it, to become stronger because of it. So now I have this connection with a new soulmate that's coming into my life whenever that I have no control of. But I am releasing the past and that is what is necessary in order for me to meet someone new or to have another energy of a soulmate come into my life. I'm having to follow my intuitive guidance, which is also important because our intuition is what guides us along the path in order to be able to do something new, to meet someone new, to open those new energies. I have guides that are helping me and my intuition as well, my higher self, so I need to learn to listen to it and pay attention in my dreams because messages are being given to me by my guides and by my soulmate. I have 
been having these connections in my dreams here lately that have been kind of odd um, conversations and remembering and stuff like that so I know that I am talking to someone that's new in my life it isn't one of my guides it's someone else that they don't ever let me see the face pretty much <laughs> it's just just little bits and pieces of things I'm being asked to follow my passions and I'm ready for this new challenge that opportunities for excitement and new adventures are coming into my life but I have to learn to be able to make the right choice there's a significant contracts and relationships and partnerships that are coming into my life soon and I need to remain balanced or find that balance so that I can open up to greater loves in my life but the sun is being shown to me from another deck and yeah, you know I know you can't see this but it's there if the TV flashes a light you'll be able to see it but um, yeah the Sun card so new beginnings across the board of partnerships of commitments of marriage even it could be sometime soon or later I'm not sure so I'm going to pull some cards and see exactly what do I need to do in order to bring about this, this new meeting with a new soulmate. What is the advice? The advice, <laughs> it's starting off with not being so stuck on the past and looking at the new opportunities that the universe is bringing to me there's going to be many choices I may meet this person through work or at their job somewhere that I go that I see this person that does a very good job he could be a crafter a person very crafty with his hands someone that's an artist perhaps because what I truly want is a commitment is a, the beginning of a committed relationship now this could all happen during a vacation after the holiday uh, during a wedding invitation there's something that's going to be celebrated so really I am being asked to release the past release my memories that I think of of other times when when I was in a commitment with someone that was very crafty but those were all illusions of mine of that re the relationship I were working so I need to release all of these memories from my past because they have betrayed me they have kept me in a trap these memories they have kept me trapped so I need to release all of this and start new need to go in a different direction I need to do a bit of traveling perhaps during a vacation during a trip I'm going to be celebrating with friends having fun looking at what I've done up to now and lo and behold justice appears so it's just it's karmic I'm going to be doing something very creative Sorry guys, I'm trying to analyze the cards that have come out as to why. There are certain things that still have to occur in my life before I can meet this person. This person could be someone that deals with, with the law, either a lawyer or policeman. be a Libra person as well because of the justice card 
Maybe I'll meet this person during the time of Libra, which is in the autumn sometime, in the fall. And there'll be celebrations, so I'll either be celebrating with friends. But I need to balance my life more with um, sharing good, happy times. I need to look at what I've done up to now when it comes to my work, what, what I do, where I spend most of my time focusing on my job. And I need to start balancing that out with the time that I spend with friends, celebrating, going out, trying to open up to meeting new people, allowing that energy in. And during some of these celebrations or being invited to go and do something fun, perhaps even an art show or something that has to do with something artistic or creative, that's where I may meet this other person that's going to be a very stern person, a very proper person that will bring balance into my life, which is a karmic thing that's coming into my life now. And it could be a Capricorn. It'll be a time when I'll start releasing a lot of my burdens in life so that my life can shift. I get the sun card again. And I'm bringing lots of messages that will be coming from a soulmate. A very spiritual person. Someone that... Someone that spends a lot of time alone. Someone that can be a very good spiritual guide. And they'll be riding into my life offering the cup of love. And again... I'm getting my Hierophant, which which tells me that this person that does come into my life will come into my life for a commitment. It's not going to be uh, a fly-by-night relationship or one that doesn't last. It'll be someone that's looking for a commitment like myself. And my Nine of Cups, which tells me it's, it's a wish come true. And it may cause some problems with family or whatever, but here I am again with the Ten of Swords that's being released now, finally out of my life, epiphanies that come to change me. I have been walled off for too long, separating myself from others and not allowing any love into my life, therefore I have been alone for a while. But here's my card of the star, where there is hope, there's hope for healing, there's hope for the things that I do desire still in my life, and I'm going to get them because I know what I need to do. This person is going to bring a lot of organization into my life. Which is great. I'm being told to ask for what I want. Let the universe and other people know what you need because it could come from an invitation of a friend. A friend may know someone that's interesting that I should meet. So I need to ask the universe for what I want. And then I have a birthday here. So someone's birthday, a significant birthday, holds the answers to your question. So there may be an invitation to go out and celebrate someone's birthday. And while I'm celebrating, my soulmate could be sitting right across from me. And this person is going to be a spiritual leader or a teacher of some sort. Your life purpose involves teaching others about healing and spirituality. So this person could be a lot like me because I figure if I'm this way, they're going to have to be similar or somehow dedicated to humanity. Something that they do has to be similar to me because otherwise it's hard. It's hard to mesh with other people that don't um, hold your values or um, do something of what you do so that it makes it easier, you know. So perhaps they'll see me as a spiritual teacher, as someone that can help them with their spirituality or their growth. But together this union will bring about emotional healing for the both of us. As your heart heals of old emotional pain, you receive new blessings and love. So releasing the past is very, very important when it comes to new relationships. So a lot of people ask me, you know, how can I allow new love and how can I find love? The thing is, 
to open yourself up to love and release the past. Without that, you can't you can't move forward. This card says you have the power. Use your abilities to resolve the situation. You can do it. So the things that you ask for, you truly can do. You just have to have enough faith in yourself that it's going to come in, that it's going to happen, that you will find it. The answers to your questions. And I will too. Past life relationship. You have known each other before. Retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. It's time to be alone and think of the things that you want in life. What you want to bring into your world. What is it that you want? What type of a relationship do you want? What type of a partner are you looking for? Divine timing is at work in your love life and it's worth waiting for. I get this. The angels are like, hey, you wait, it's coming. It's just not right yet. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. See, they kind of tell me already. It's worth waiting for. Time apart. There are things that still need to be settled with you and your soulmate. So you have to wait. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy, to bring more passion into everything that you do in order to raise your vibration and bring in the soulmate that you're asking about. Free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. We become fragmented, and I was telling this to a friend last night on the phone. We do become fragmented in our lives through relationships, disappointments, choices that we make, different jobs, problems with family. Pieces of our soul seems like they, they become scattered or clouded, obscured. We become fragmented in a sense. And we need to call all those pieces back home. We need to pull ourselves together in essence and um, become whole again. Become who we were. The, the parts of us that we love that we kind of set aside because we're, we're trying to protect it from being hurt. We don't want those parts of us that make us vulnerable to be exposed on any level to anyone. So those are the pieces that we need to call back into our lives and make them the forefront. Open ourselves back up like we used to. That way we can attract what we truly want in our lives. Because really, we don't want to be alone or in a relationship that doesn't understand us. And just be in a relationship just because you don't want to be alone. That's not good. That's never good. Well, there is someone coming. There's a man holding a coin. So there's a man that that is financially stable. Someone that can help us with our finances also. That is coming. The second chakra, the sacral chakra, is is being highlighted here as something that needs to be strengthened in order to allow our power to flow our creativity. The angel of love also is blocked, so we're trying to block ourselves from opening up. But we have the healer of the ages here, which tells me that we're being healed from this block that we've had when it comes to relationships. And relationships are going to start pouring in. It'll just be your choice as to who you're going to choose, what you want in your life, and you'll be presented with many different options in order to, to see if you've grown, if you're going to fall for the same old story, or if you're going to truly wait for the one that is coming, that is important in your life. And there is a journey, metaphorically or physically, that we will take in order to, to learn more. Maybe during a journey, during a celebration, we will meet someone that's great for us. There's also going to be new creativity, new activities that begin in our lives. So keep yourselves open for that because the heartbreak is there and we need to overcome it. We need to overcome this three of swords, this disappointment that we have when it comes to love. Through resting, through meditation, we'll be able to overcome it. 
we just need to let go of the fear, let go of the attachments that we may have to past relationships or unhealthy situations or unhealthy patterns when it comes to relationships. We may have addictions, addicted to sex, addicted to food, drugs, cigarettes, drinking, whatever it is. We need to overcome our addictions. We need to overcome the addiction to being codependent with another person in our lives. We need to be happy with who we are and become self-sufficient, become proud, proud of who we are, who we've become, the things that we've done for ourselves. So we don't need a partner. We just desire it in order to share a life with them and not because we need them on any level and they need to be there as well, you know. That's what makes a good relationship, a 50-50. Not that codependency or desiring a relationship to help you uh, with bills or to help you get ahead or nothing of that sort will ever end up being a happy union. You know, you may stay together for a long time, but it won't be on happy terms. There has to be a soul connection, a heartfelt connection in order for it to work, you know, and meet each other 50-50 halfway so that you both contribute to the relationship as opposed to only one contributing and the other one taking or the other one being very codependent on this relationship whether it's emotional or financially or both because it could become that um, all right guys uh, i think that i'm done with my musings for the moment um if I don't put out a weekly reading, you can consider this the weekly reading. But it's kind of dark though, huh? <laughs> I'll try to put out a reading with light. <laughs> Alright guys, talk to you later. Bye.